Welcome to the third episode of Weekend Sprints. Today, I'd like to build a client part of our full stack application that we are going to deploy using Azure Python. Since the last episode, we have some inheritance in place. So we have Flask application dockerized and up and running on the local machine. So we're going to reuse that for the dev purposes. And we also have a Postgres instance up and running as well. Let's check it out. Let's get connected to that Postgres instance with PostgreSQL clients. And let's check if we have a database still in place. And maybe we have a table with uh, some books as well. We select all books and yes, indeed, we do have some books in place and we're going to use that content for our client application. As we can see, the Docker instance is exposed to the worldwide, so we can access that API as well. For the clients, I'm going to use Vue.js framework. So I created the project using the command line interface. So there is view CLI project, and then you can go through the wizard and define what exactly you need for the project. So particularly for this case, I used a view router and I also used a bunch of dependencies such as um, Axios. So I can do the calls against the external APIs. Um, and then the project structure itself is relatively simple. So it's actually very similar to the default uh, project structure. So I have uh, two routes in place. With uh, router, I defined routes for the books and I also defined routes for the health, just to check the, uh, um, the application state, whether it's up and running from the clients. And then I have several components. Um, so one of that is the health component, which makes the API call towards the health endpoints I'm using Axios. And then I also have the books component. So in the books component, I define um, the models for the edit and for adding new book. So there are also a bunch of methods in place, like um, creating a new book, updating a new book, updating the book, reading the book, um, and then deleting the book. So everything is defined here. So there are also defined the states of each uh, fields in the form, like what is the initial field and what are the props I need to pass over to those fields. And um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's the, the application that I'm going to use. So literally it's a CRUD or creates, reads, update, deletes, type of application, nothing special. And then what is the most important is that typically you run this application behind the uh, reverse proxy, such as Nginx, for example. And in order to test it, I created a Docker file. So in that Docker file, I do run the NPM run build, which literally creates the disk directory for me. And then that Docker image contains also the Nginx server itself with a default engines configuration which points to the folder where the content of my website lives and also uh, the port to listen let me first test the application running that locally so npm run serve will uh, execute the application over here on this local machine and then since i have defined local host for my backend so it can actually fetch the data from there so my next step is to use the docker build command and build the client's image. Yeah, this can take some time and then let's quickly execute that image using docker run and let's expose the port 80 also so we can access the application from the local machine. I would like to quickly explore how application is running. So I'm going to use the browser and port 81. So that's the port that we exposed. And then if I go to the dev tool, I can see what exact APIs uh, or endpoints my client is using. So I can clearly see that my main page uses a bunch of uh, get methods to fetch the uh, list of books. And if I try to add a new book, for example, so I give a title, author, amount of pages in the book, and also whether I read the book or not, 
Um, so I can see that the post method is being used in this case. So the book has been submitted and we also see that the end line appeared in that table. So at least uh, the client part work. So we don't see any errors here. And if we go to the payload, so we can clearly see that that's the payload that my client submitted to the server. So that's basically JSON that contains title, author, number of pages, and the read or not. So we can also delete the page, uh, the book, and we can see that another method has been used. So that's a delete method, which is also available in a client, and it's been successfully processed by the server so the next uh, thing that we would like to explore is how we actually host this application or these sort of applications in azure so for that azure offers what is called static web application so mainly it's about the static content that includes html javascript and css the uh, styles for the application so there is a azure static web app resource available in azure and in that exact resource, in that exact service, we can host our Vue.js application because it also offers out-of-the-box support for this. All right, so let me first build this application and see what's the outcome of this build process for npm run build. So the result of this command is basically a dist folder. So that folder contains everything that my application needs. It contains the HTML, the uh, Cascade styles, and also the GS uh, models, like compiled models. I don't have any static web application created yet, and I will use the bicep template for this because the whole purpose of this workshop is to explore the options in bicep. So the model for the static website contains several properties. So I will use the free SKU because um, yeah, we it's just more than enough. And then the whole idea of this service is that it basically takes the content of your static application or uh, single page application from the repository and then it builds that and then it published the outcome of the build. So let's create the repository in GitHub. By the way, uh, there is option to host it in Azure DevOps available as well. So I create a empty repository and I will uh, add the content that I have for my static web application over here in this folder. And then, so my application lives in the client folder and the artifact which we get at the end is in the dist folder so the moment we run the npm run build on the agent um it's going to generate a dist folder and that folder will contain literally everything that we need to run our static application so i'm going to push this stuff uh, to my git repository and it will get the exact structure that my bicep model needs so basically a client folder with everything in size and then so this is where the start of the build process will will begin so um let's go ahead and uh, let's do a little change as well because we are not going to use the local host for a router so we would like to use the real api the real endpoint that we host in azure so for that we go to the application service that we use to host our flask application and then let's just quickly validate whether we have everything is there yes so it returns book and then let's use this as a base url so our clients will actually fetch information from this url instead of localhost and then the same route we're going to use to um, check the health state of the api so let's commit this change to the repository and then let's see if we can build the static web application great so we have a change in place so now it's time to work with the bicep. So for that, 
we're gonna do the following. So we need a repository token as well, because I don't really want to provide that repository token from the command line. So I better use the key vault. So I place the key vault in the key vault my token, and then using the KV function or get secret function from my buy sub templates, I will read the value of the key vault of the secret from the key vault. So we provided the name of the key vault. We also provided the git URL, and then we defined the branch where the content of my static web application lives. So it's a main branch. So it's good enough. And then we submit the template and we wait until it deploys the resources and gets the content that we need for that static web application. Fast forward, we get a resource in place. Let's examine what is there. So there is a URL that we can use to access the client application, but it's not there yet. And the reason is that having that token that we provided for the bicep template, we received a workload. So basically it's an action for the GitHub project that contains number of steps that does the checkout of the repository with uh, the static web application, runs the NPM run command or N NPM run build uh, to generate that beast folder. So everything is actually happening on the edge and we don't really want to commit a pre-run or pre-built uh, stuff to the repository. Instead, we want to commit the first code and then run the actual build on the agent. So this is what exactly is happening on the agent right now. So first it checks out the repository, uh, builds the stuff using NPM, and then publish that to the dist folder. And looks like it was successfully finished. And if we go back to the URL, we can see that um, the application is up and running. Let's quickly do some checks. Um, if we go ahead to the dev tool, and if we try to add a new book, we will see that uh, the endpoints will be used exactly that we provided. So those um, endpoints of our application, of our API application, which is running in Azure using app service. So we can clearly see that if we look at the uh, get method that fetches all the books, and if we look at the method that basically creates a new book, we can see that we call the endpoint that we defined in our client. So the same thing uh, for the update, the same thing for the delete. If we try to delete, that's gonna delete that via the same route, via the same um, endpoints that we defined in that base URL. Great, the application works as we expected. So the other thing that I'd like to check is, um, go back to my Azure portal and open up the database that hosts the data that we submit. So we use the Azure PostgreSQL managed uh, database. So, and then what I want to do, I just want to quickly add a test book over here in the table. So let's um, add some book from Dostoevsky. So from the Russian classic. And then let's go ahead and using the terminal connect to this PostgreSQL instance. So for that, we define the host, which I just uh, took from the Azure portal. And then also let's define the username, which we have for that database. And then let's connect straight to the MyDB. So we define the password super quickly and then Let's just quickly select all the books that we have in the books table. Perfect. So there is a last book that we added to the table. So it's there. Let's do another run. Let's create some book from some author. Let's give it some pages. And let's go back to the clients and let's see if the book has been added. Yes, it's there. Perfect. I will run more tests to create some more books here. So let's add some books that I recently read and let's see if the application actually works. And let's validate that from the database side, like going directly to the common line and fetch all the books directly from the database. Yes, everything works as expected. 
So that's perfect. That's what we actually wanted. So the other thing that I want to explore is how we actually update the application. So for example, if there is a change, how we deploy that change to the static web app. So let's quickly change the title. So let me quickly run the application locally. So for that, I change directory to the client and I use the npm run command. So I have this title books and I want to change it to my books. So let's make a change and let's go ahead and deploy that change to the static web application. So the process is relatively simple. So we use Git repository for that. And then remember in Git, we have the workload. So that workload will actually fetch the changes, will build the application and publish that application to the static web, web, website. So we have this action up and running. So it's still pending. It's still doing some change. Now it's green. And if you go back to the client, we see that it shows my books. So that's exact change that we did earlier. With that in mind, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.